Unfortunately, the fitness industry in itself makes the whole thing so much more complex than it needs to be. So it's Saturday the 3rd of February and today myself, Laura and Alfie are heading down to Cornwall because we are running a training performance workshop down in Cornwall tomorrow at one of our CrossFit gyms that we're in collaboration with. Heading down there now on this extremely grey, gloomy day in Bath and uh, excited for tomorrow. So myself and Laura have just been into McDonald's, just had our coffee and I've just gone over my slides for the last time. Alfie has got his team box kit on. He's ready for the seminar today. So let's go. And Laura, what did you have? Oh, donut. Laura, Laura had a donut. She's not calling me or you a donut. She ate a donut. It's delicious. Yeah. I had a uh, cheesy bacon flatbread for like 200 calories. Was it? Yeah, it was No, you maybe, read that wrong. Maybe. That was like 500. Maybe 300. You just make these macros up. We're really good at filming this, look. Neither of us are in shock. Alfie Dog, how are you doing back there, Burrow? Oh, hey, buddy. Oh. You got your team box kit on? Yeah. Merry Christmas. So this is Christmas. This is uh, James's dog, the owner of the CrossFit gym, and I think it's fallen in love with Alfie. I mean, you can't blame her, to be fair. Look at him. There's no way to pull anyone as if you're gonna bite their head. Ah, oh, look at these two. focus on doing a deadlift with proper execution of the hamstrings and glutes, your weight is gonna be significantly less, but once you catch that up, you can then apply efficiency and now you're quick, strong, and you've got big hamstrings because you've got the muscle doing the job it's designed to do, yeah? Because what we wanna do is to be able to apply the most amount of load possible whilst activating the muscle. I've just got back to the office from Cornwall and I just thought I'd kind of reflect a little bit on the day um, and some of the stuff that we went over. Now, we started off the day with um, just kind of like a quick meet and greet to everyone and everyone that came was absolutely fantastic and they just really wanted to learn which was brilliant. I mean, there's nothing like helping people that want to learn. So we kicked off with a bit of a meet and greet and then we went into first part which is the nutrition seminar and I kind of went over the real mechanics of fat loss. How you work out essentially how many calories you need every single day, how much you need to cut on, how long do you need and just taking people through some simple math in order to yeah, so that they can calculate their own time frames and rates of weight loss and then they can sort of choose, you know, do they want to go a little bit faster, a little bit more aggressive or whatever. And, you know, we had some great conversations from that. You know, some people were asking, like, have you got any tips in order to, um, you know, track my food when I'm cooking for like the family or whatever, um, or they need to divvy it out into different portions if they're meal prepping. Um, and other questions like, how does muscle protein synthesis work? Um, so we had a real diverse questions and something that I really enjoy doing is just, you know, taking what the science says and break it, breaking it down into just manageable chunks for people to learn. The, you know, science, nutrition can be really, really complex, but when it actually comes to applying it, it's actually quite simple. Um, and the hard thing is, and this is obviously where the art comes in of coaching, it's just really helping people navigate through all the mess. Like Laura and um, Emil had a great conversation this week, um, and they were talking about how, unfortunately, the fitness industry in itself makes the whole thing so much more complex than it needs to be. Um, you know, if you're watching my YouTube channel, you're probably watching some others' YouTube channels, and you're gonna hear conflicting information, like, should you have a cheat day? Shouldn't you have a cheat day? They might be talking about like, you know, should you track your calories? You know, should you forget about it and just go keto? Whatever. And the problem is, is that you've got people that are extremely biased and want to either A, sell you something. Um, and just for clarity, I sell coaching, okay? Um, and also I sell training programs, right? So, um, I'm probably going to talk about how important those things are, but it's up to you to make your decision whether you feel like, you know, I'm someone that, you know, you'd want to buy a nutrition program off or coaching or, you know, team box essentially. But everything that we try and do is driven by science. So we take what, you know, I've got a research paper here 
and this is just about the role of protein within the diet and it's a very well written piece you know 18 20 pages long but i'm just going to take some simple chunks from that and then apply it to my clients and, and how does that look like in terms of food you know timing of protein quality of protein and, and all that kind of stuff and what does it boil down to but we kind of did the nutrition side of things and then we went on to the training program or the training um part of the uh the day and again like it was really interesting because they're a crossfit gym um i used to dabble with a little bit of crossfit years ago and i'm talking like eight years ago or something so i have a like familiar familiarity i can't even speak today i'm familiar with those guys and um what they want to be doing and the way i train you would think is polar opposite to what they do, right? Now, the thing about bodybuilding is that it's all about being better today than it was yesterday. In essence, that's all it is. And every sport is actually the same. The first thing that, you know, obviously I wanna try and do is build some common ground. And I needed to tell them the importance of understanding what their muscles do. So rather than going to the gym and doing CrossFit, powerlifting, whatever it might be, and guys in the gym, or ladies if you're listening, um, just thinking about I need to do a hip thrust or I need to do a bench press and it needs to start here and end here. Well, all you're focusing on is moving a bar, but what you're failing to do, and this is the important part of the training workshop um, in what we try and deliver in Bath, um, is how does that actually happen? How do you get the bar from A to B? Because, and also, why are you trying to do it? Because you shouldn't think, oh, I'm doing hip thrust, so it hits my glutes. You should think, how do I build bigger glutes? What is the best tool that I can use in order to do that? And if that's hip thrust for some people, great. If it's kickbacks for others, if it's squats for, you know, whatever. It's about finding out the best way and the best tool to use in that scenario because then what we want to try and do is ensure when you're training that muscle is the one that's being worked and you're taking it through the furthest range of motion that you possibly can and then how do we actually train it okay what is the stimulus that we're trying to provide and that is tension so i did some little cues and some little tips um, I could probably do it here actually. So what I want you to do, do it with me and you can feel hopefully the difference. So everyone is familiar with a bicep curl, right? Now there are so many people that are doing a bicep curl wrong when I go to the gym because they're most likely using momentum. That's one thing that they could be using. And if you're using momentum, you're not using your muscles. So if they're either using momentum or they are changing where their arm is in order to make it easier, or finally, they might actually be using other muscles except their biceps, okay? Now you're much better off reducing the weight, really like, sometimes with this stuff, you really need to go light in order to find out what you can actually lift for these exercises. So do this with me. What I want you to do, if you sat down, stood up, just let your arm hang down, okay? Um, I tell you what, I've got a vest on. I'm gonna show you because it's much easier. So. Normally what we would do from this position is just focus on bending the elbow and taking the arm from A to B. So A is at the bottom, B is at the top, okay? That's all we would ever do, right? And what you see is you see people swinging it at the bottom, you see people moving their elbow forward and all this kind of stuff. So what I want you to do is tense your tricep as hard as you can, okay? So straight away this locks my arm out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my elbow right into my waist, okay? So I'm gonna get right in my seat. So this elbow isn't gonna change position. This is gonna stay here. This tricep is tensed, and now what I'm gonna do is flex my bicep and tense my arm as hard as I possibly can. So do this, really feel it squeeze, and now you can see there's a lot more tension going through my bicep, hopefully, I hope. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is just focus on and you'll see that my arm is slightly come forward and slightly bent. So this is actually the start of the exercise because there's no momentum now. And now what I'm gonna do is just flex and squeeze my bicep as, I, as hard as I possibly can as I get to the top, still maintaining tension in my tricep, okay? And now when I'm here, I'm now gonna pull my tricep down 
and just resist with my bicep, okay? So this is your perfect bicep curl. And a few reps of this, and already you can start to see the shake, you can see the tension, and now my bicep is stronger, okay? That's the one that's working here. So now I'd be able to load it up with me. This is a couple of kilos. Add on a little bit more resistance, and before you know it, you'll be doing that level of intensity, but with 10s or 12s or whatever it might be, and really building up that intention. I mean, I've got a pretty good pump off that. So as you can see there, there's no momentum. I'm concentrating on that bicep and the other muscles around it are just stabilizing it, okay? So that was one of the things that we went over. Um, and there was a lot of the other exercises that I spoke about is all about making sure that when we're using like a, an exercise like a lateral raise, so a shoulder raise, a lot of people actually use their traps because remember that your body doesn't give a shit what you do. It really doesn't. It doesn't care what muscle you train. It just wants to find the easiest path because you're telling yourself to move this weight from down below up to the top, okay? Now my trap is much stronger. So it's gonna do all the work, right? It's gonna just find the most easiest way to do it. But that's where you need to have a good training program and a good knowledge of that skill to really focus on making that change to develop the delt. Completely different technique, okay? And the result, although it might look the same that I'm taking my arm from below up to high, the result is so much different because on that second you know, a few reps there, I was really engaging my delt and I wasn't using my trap. Um, and that's really important because without proper movement and putting your bones in, you know, like for example, like your scapula, like this part here, in the right position, you're not gonna be able to use your lats properly and you'll end up with a small back. So when you're trying to deadlift, when you're trying to squat, when you're trying to clean, whatever it might be, you're not gonna be in a stable position because your lats are not gonna be able to fire and hold you there. And especially if you wanna do bodybuilding, that was one thing that I learned, um, was that I had a really crap back. I had great pecs, good abs, good quads, but I turned from the side and it looks like I don't even lift. Um, and I've spent the last you know, two or three years hammering my form to make sure that you know, now I've actually got some lats. Um, and they're, they're still quite small in comparison to what they uh, what they could be. Just really, you know, focus on what you're doing when you are training, and you will see so much better results. Um, you know, we've got our next masterclass is in uh, next month, um, which sold out within 48 hours, and then our second workshops in April, um, and that one also sold out within 48 hours. But I've managed to squeeze in a few extra spaces. So if you do want a space, um, I've managed to speak to the facility and get basically a few more spaces on the go, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, because obviously the demand is there, you can just head over to the team box site and the one, the next one I think is in April, the 29th of April. Um, so if you wanna learn more and you're gonna have six, um, sorry, six coaches take you through four sessions over the day and you're going to be training. We're going to be getting hands on, you know, showing you what it feels like to train like this. And um, I don't want to talk about it too much, but it's up to you if you obviously want to do something like that and really take your knowledge, you know, to that next level. If you're a PT, you're going to learn so much about how to train people. So when you go back to your clients, you're going to help them get better results. Um, you know, and it's kind of like some of my clients that went on it uh, back in, November are still now telling me about the better results that they're getting. So it's a really long-term program. It's not just where you come, we smash you and you go home. It is really a case of educating you to be better, to know more. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Next week's video, I'm gonna be going over the current state of affairs with my prep. Um, so you'll see another progress video um, and going over basically how my own prep's going. So if you're interested in that, yeah, watch the next one and comment below if you've got any questions on training. I'd love to speak more about training and if you enjoy that topic, let me know and I can go, you know, talk more about things like the strength curve, isolation versus compound exercises, how to use bands in chains, whatever it might be, supersets, drop sets, cluster sets. Yeah, if you're interested in it, let me know, comment below and um, I'll see you guys soon.